This is a blackthorn that's been collected two seasons. We are in mid-September 2003. Uh, it's a great tree. It's, it's displaying nice. very, very nice uh, old bark and fantastic movements. But it has one problem, and you can see it right here. And what it is, is that this top of this tree here, branch, um, is actually fatter than all the other branches and out of scale. Uh, but it's too good just to cut off. So uh, what we've decided to do is uh, do an air layer. So we're going to show you the, uh, from start to finish, uh, preparation of this air layer. Uh, and it's going to be around this area here. And what that will do is it will give us a beautiful, small, showing size uh, cascade with old bark and great movement. So what we've got as well, we've got our tools at the ready. We've got rooting hormone. We've got sphagnum moss that's been soaked in seaweed. Sharp knife, saw, scissors, and two kinds of plastic. Um, a clear plastic that will go on first, and then a black plastic which will go uh, around afterwards. Uh, and what that will do is it will help um, encourage roots by warming the air layer. So we're gonna make the first cut. So Dave, take it away. Right, the obvious place for me is to utilize the bit where it's a little bit fatter already. Gives us a nice little bit of taper at the bottom. So our top cut will be something about there, I'd say. And where about, where's your bottom cut gonna be? Until I get about there. Really quite narrow, so it's like only yeah. about an inch or maybe 20, yeah. uh, 20 about, millimeters. Usually about the thickness of the branch. Uh, no more than one and a half times the thickness of the branch. So. Are you going to completely ring bark this? Yeah, I, I never leave a bridge. Okay. I think it's just leaving it open to failure, really. All right. I know a lot of people t talk about having a bridge, don't they? But yeah, uh, okay. I, I, I think a lot of the time it's why they fail, to be honest. There's no reason for it. But do you want to spin it round? Let's have a look at the other side. Got a sharp knife. Got a saw. Oh, you're gonna do the saw first. Oh, all right. A bit okay. controversial. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So why? Why the saw? Well, everybody says it's got to be a really clean cut with a really sharp knife. But uh, in my experience, I do it with a saw. Okay. And uh, it works. I sometimes tidy up the top cut with a knife if it's a bit jagged. This isn't the normal saw I would normally use. We'll see. All right. Where you go. I'm basically cutting just as deep until I can see nice clean wood. Now what nice and white usually with most trees. There's a bit of an old wound here, so it's actually dead wood in there. Be alright though. More using this like a file really. Alright. So what we've got now is the two cuts. That was done with a saw. So why a saw, Dave? What do you reckon? To be honest with you, the saw was out of convenience when I was out in the wilds doing thick branches and the <laughs> knife just wasn't practical. I started doing with the saw and they worked. So your, yeah, all right. So your, your success rate is no difference or maybe even improved if you're using a saw uh, yeah but if if the, if the top cut is really rough i might tidy it up with the knife just just the cambium uh it depends i'll have to look at it first okay so what's the next thing you're going to do i'm going to cut vertical cut here okay. and hopefully it'll just peel off okay should we, watch? Should we see that yeah but if it doesn't uh, <laughs> <scrape> it. <laughs> do it a bit more yeah. okay Hopefully it'll just peel away. It is sticking a little bit. If we were doing this in spring, it would come off a little bit easier. So this time of year is not ideal, but then again, you know, it's the opportunity was here to do it now. Yeah. We could have waited. This time of the year is it's not traditional, but 
the same thing when you when you walk when you're walking out in the wild and it's taking you six hours to get there and back you tend to uh, do things conveniently so I used I started putting them on at the same time I was harvesting last year's right. I'm the I always harvest in the autumn so I started putting them on in the autumn the same day I took them off I put the new ones on and they seem to work actually quicker than the conventional timing I think a lot of it also depends on what the weather is going to be like over the period you know, uh, 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 that this has been done. Um, what, I, what I mean is, is that, actually I'm not quite sure what I mean. <laughs> uh, I'm coming to the conclusion that the time is not that important. They're quite, quite often left on over two or even sometimes three winters anyway. Okay. This, where well, you can see it's gone brown now, that's where the cambium's oxidised quickly, that needs to come off. We're not really scraping any of the white wood away though. Okay, you can just see it's a bit fibrous at the top here. All I'm going to do with that top coat is clean away those loose fibres. Right, I can see that the cambium in here has gone nice and brown and oxidised, so I know the cambium is clear. So, that's good, we're ready to go. So this is live sphagnum moss. It's actually dead now, isn't it? No. When we, <laughs> when we collected it, it's pretty alive, but it I really it has a very, very strong smell. It's been soaked in uh, a liquid seaweed, uh, a seaweed extract. Um, shame we haven't got smelly vision because you'll be able to smell it. But we've got uh, rooting hormone as well, which it is it's not 100% necessary, is it? I don't always use it. It's, it. You know, we can use it. There's no if, harm. If I've got it with me, I use it. Yeah. So this is a, a real bonus, this stuff. It's great. Um, I know you can buy the dried stuff in garden centres, but if you can find a place that will allow you to collect this sphagnum, it's well worth doing. So um, what we're going to do now is um, just wet the end of the brush, a bit of spit, mum spit. and just, do, do just, just makes the powder stick to the cup, basically. It's just a bit of spit. is the clear plastic. Dave's going to take the sphagnum moss, as you can see here. It's been soaked. This is probably the hardest bit, getting it exactly right. There we go. It looks like a lot of moss for that size, but it's not. What I tend to so do... this, is, this moss has actually been um, squeezed out. It's not wet. It's just damp. So you can see, look, there's no, there's a few drips coming from it, but that's it. You know, you do not put it in. And I think that's one of the problems with it, with air layers. People have them too wet. Is that right? Yeah, definitely. You get a lot of callus in, but no root in if your moss is too wet. What I tend to do, a little bit fat in the middle and thin at the ends, a bit like a cigar shaped, like that. And I'll roll it in this quite tight, like that. And that'll kind of make it consolidate together so it doesn't all fall apart in theory when you lift it up. Okay. But we'll see. Always have uh, one one end of the plastic longer as well. Yeah. We'll see how it goes.
Yeah, got to. Start again. This is actually quite an awkward one because it's quite close to this other branch. If I was to just help move that apart, would that help? Impossible. <laughs> it's, trust okay. me, it's, it's nowhere near as awkward as halfway up a tree. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you do quite a lot of air layering in the wild, don't you? Yeah. Which is it's just... where the better material is. that second time. Also helps a lot if you've already got your retaining wires cut now. <laughs> Which we have, they are here, ready and waiting. The only important part really is that top cut. Yeah. I always double check that the, the moss is definitely over that top cut. imagine doing this in the wild <laughs> you're halfway up a tree a hawthorn no doubt yeah they do bite so that's pretty secure now that's going nowhere we can mess about with that now so we can double check our cut, make sure everything's covered. But as long as that top cut has got moss, we're all right. Do you want to see it? Yeah, I can, can see it. it. I can see it. It's right down there. Yeah. There it well, is. Well, So what yeah. you're saying about moss about an inch higher than the cut? Uh, it doesn't have to be anything like as high as that. As long as it covers that top cut, right, it's okay. fine. All right. If you notice, just pulling this plastic around it has tightened it a little bit uh, but it doesn't have to be like tight like a drum right as long as that moss is touching that top coat that's, that's, that's what's important and don't pull this one too tight because it will this is still growing and it will bite the wire will bite through the plastic and put a, a, a round scar on the bottom of your tree, which you don't want. So, it's plenty tight enough. All it's doing is stopping it falling off. I always shape it a bit now, so it's very cool. And the branch is pretty much in the middle. So, when the weather does warm up, positioning this, yeah, you would turn it every so often. Yeah, the, the side that gets the sun is the warmest, and that'll get the better roots. So if you turn it regularly, yeah, uh, if you just left it in one place like that, and the sun was say here, this is south facing, all the roots would be here, and there'd be nothing, there'd be nothing on the other side. Uh, in the wild, there's nothing you can do about that. <laughs> Get up but there and turn a tree. If it's in a pot, you can you can control that a bit. You know, it's the ball is spherical. It is a ball. You see yeah. a lot, and the. Yeah, yeah. Like a cylinder. The roots that come out of this cut here will follow that plastic in that shape. Yeah. So you're getting a natural, nice root yeah. shaped flare, yeah. nice and flat. Rather than if you if it was a cylinder, the roots would go like that and you'd have a corner on your roots. Yeah. Okay. No, it looks terrible. Yeah, yeah. So so, so that if you if you if you always make this round, you get the roots a nice natural spherical nice. shape. That's great. Rather and than you, that angle. And you're certainly creating a decent nabari from the off. In theory, <laughs> yeah. there's no guarantees with this, is there? Never. There are no guarantees. No. Yeah, and when we say guarantees, I mean this is not exactly the time that we would do an air layer. So if it takes, great. If it doesn't, well, at the end of the day, we were only going to cut it off anyway. So you know, this, this tree as a you know a future bonsai is many years away. So one year or two to do this air layer is not going to sort of slow the whole creation of the mother plant as a bonsai. So now the LA is completely uh, enclosed. 
Coast with the sphagnum moss and the clear plastic. So the next stage is to wrap it with black plastic. And so, why do we do that, Dave? Why are we, why are we putting black on? Well, light inhibits root growth. So we need, we need to keep the light out. Well, as soon as the roots reach the, the plastic, when they hit the daylight, that will inhibit their growth. So we, we need to keep it dark, just so the, the roots will, not, will grow nicely. Uh, also, it's warmer in the sun. A little bit of heat helps as well. So I always wrap it around a few times, just on the theory that the darker it is, the better. Yeah. So this is just a bin liner? Yeah. It's always the third, but I've used supermarket plastic bags for the white, the clear. As long as you can see any roots through the clear plastic part, that's all that matters. So you don't, you don't have to dismantle it to check for any root growth, as you'll see them through the plastic. If you can't see roots through the clear plastic, leave it alone. Don't open it up to see. Just leave it alone until you can see them. There. You've just got to be patient, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I've done a lot of these. I, it can be very tricky. So you, you wire the bottom one first? Yeah. With the clear plastic, you always wire the bottom one first. If it's a horizontal air layer, if, it, if, it, if it's a vertical air layer, if it's a horizontal air layer, it's very tricky. <laughs> Yeah, but it doesn't matter which one you do first. And this wire, all it's doing is stopping the black falling off, so it doesn't have to be tight or anything. I always leave these tag ends long on this one because you need to open that to inspect it now and again. So Good just, tip there, everybody. Yeah. So there we go. Not finished. He's not finished. This is important. You must stab a drain hole on the lowest part, wherever, wherever that sphere is, wherever, wherever the lowest part of that is, stab a drain hole because water will run down this trunk and the moss will get too wet. So stab a drain hole. Top tip, make sure the yeah. drain hole right at the bottom there. And every time you do take the black off to inspect it or anything like that, always stab a new drain hole because you've moved it. You've, you've covered the drain hole again. So always stab a new drain hole. Uh, that's it, done. There we go. So there we go. That's our air layer done. That took, what, about 20 minutes, something like that? Great technique. Thank you very much, Dave. So we are going to end up with a, uh, a nice little showing with some great branches and good bark. Um, hopefully in a couple of seasons time, we should be able to get that into a, into a pot and then, uh, then growing. Hopefully next autumn. Yeah, next autumn, let's see. Putting them on at this time of the year, I've noticed by springtime, when you normally will be putting them on, we've already got some roots sometimes. And that, that gives it a good start. That's good. All right, well, thank you very much, Dave. You're welcome.